I wanted to show the dogs up close before I add all of their accessories. And this one I made with a different type of yarn that I'm going to show you. And this is the one that I make on video tutorial. So you can see the yarn. It's hard to tell that this is even crochet and this is just a close-up of the stitches. And I made the legs so that they move up and down, just like some of my other dogs. Now I'm going to show you the dogs with all their stuff on. So here is Pearl. You can see how she has her bows and what the bows look like on her. And then she also has these friendship bracelets on. I have a separate video tutorial that shows how to make the friendship bracelets. But I do show how to make the collars with this elastic type cord. And then if you want to add the beads, then you can go to my other video tutorial for the friendship bracelet to learn how to do that. She also has her name tag on and her collar. And then here is her bandana and what it looks like on. And here is King. And here is his collar. And I showed two different ways to make the collar. So King has his collar looks a little bit different, but it's also the elastic collar that comes off. And then you can see his bandana and how cute that bandana looks like on him. And then here, this is Penny. She's the one that inspired this video tutorial. And Penny also has her collar on. The same style collar that King has. And then this is her bandana. And what it looks like on her. For this project, you're going to need your J or 6 millimeter crochet hook, as well as your tapestry needle and a pair of scissors. For the safety eyes, you could either use Doris Animal Safety Eyes, or you can use your Suncatcher Craft Eyes, the black, the solid black, which is what I used for this project, and the size is 18 millimeters. I used Lion Brand Yarns Homespun Thick and Quick. This color is pearls. And you're going to need two skeins of this yarn. I'm just going to give you a little bit of information on it. 8 ounces, 227 grams, and 160 yards. And the other color that I used was Edwardian. For the Edwardian, I only needed one skein. This pattern is tailored specifically for this type of yarn, so this yarn can be a little bit difficult to work with, so a beginner may not want to attempt this for their first amigurumi dog. I have some easier beginner dogs that, that um, you can try first before getting to this dog. I used the Bernat Softy Chunky black color for the nose. I just like this one because it's just a really thick yarn. It makes a really nice nose. You're going to have a lot of this yarn left over for other animal noses if you like how it turns out. I just out. used a soft pastel baby yarn like Bernat, light pink for the tongue. If you like this color for the dog, I used Yarn Bee, Fireside, Mandarin color, and this is the cost for the yarn. And this is a little bit more information about the yarn. Sometimes having the DMC yarn threader will help with this yarn to get it through the eye of the needle. The first thing I'm going to do is show you how to make the snout. So just get the main color that you're using for your snout. And you're going to drape the yarn across your four fingers. Use your thumb to stabilize. Then wrap the yarn around your two middle fingers and hold it in place with your pinky and your thumb. Then take your J crochet hook, go under those two loops around the middle fingers, bring up a loop. 
Then yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through that loop for a slip knot. Then we're going to make six single crochet into the magic circle. So just go under those two loops, bring up a loop, yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through both loops for a single crochet. Now make sure you don't leave the loop too tight around your crochet hook. You want to make sure you have a loose loop there. Then go into the magic circle, bring up a loop, yarn over and then go through both for a single crochet. And you're going to make six single crochet into the magic circle. That's my third one. Then take your forefinger and your thumb and just hold the base of the six single crochet. You're going to have two loops on the opposite side of the magic circle. You're going to pull on one of them. If it doesn't close, let go and pull on the other one, but this one's closing. Just gently close it. Don't close it too tight. Then take your loose yarn end and pull on that, and then that closes up the magic circle nicely. Now you're going to turn your work so that your first stitch is showing. Just take your crochet hook, go in that first stitch. You're going to go in both loops. And this yarn makes it a little bit difficult to see the stitches. So for a beginner, you may want to try one of my other dogs first. But if you've been crocheting for a while, then you'll be able to know the stitches. And then you're going to make two single crochet into the same stitch. And you're going to do that all the way around until you have a total of 12 stitches. I'm going to do one more with you, so I'm going to go into the next stitch over. And I'm going to make two single crochet into each stitch. So the hard part for this one is seeing the stitches. That's why this yarn makes it a little bit more difficult for a beginner. But if you practice with one of the easier yarns, or one of my easier dogs, then you'll be able to do this one because you'll already know how to make the stitches and you won't have to count. So go ahead, finish making your two single crochet into every stitch around. And then now we're going to make our increase rounds. So you're going to take your yarn marker. I'm just using one of my scraps of yarn. Just place it right where you left off. Then you're going to make one single crochet into the first stitch and then two single crochet into the second stitch. And you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around. And as you can see, it's practically impossible to count the stitches. So you're just going to have to, as a um, crocheter, you're, you're going to know where the stitches are and approximate where you're going to put your stitches. And it doesn't matter if your count's a little bit off compared to mine, as long as the end result looks similar to the snout that I have, then you're good. So you're going to do your best to work your way around and make one single crochet into the first stitch and then two single crochet into the second stitch. And you're going to do that all the way around until you're back to the yarn marker. And you can see how this yarn's a little bit more tricky to work with, but it comes out with a beautiful result. This is how my work looks so far. Now, when you reach the yarn marker, go ahead and pull out the yarn marker and place it right where you left off. And we're going to make another increase round. For this increase round, you're going to make one single crochet into two stitches. And then you're going to make two single crochet into the third stitch. And then you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around, back to the yarn marker, and then come back. This is how my work looks so far. 
Now you're going to take your yarn marker and move it up. That was the last increase round. Now you're just going to make one single crochet into every stitch around until you've completed six rounds. So one single crochet in every stitch around for six rounds and then come back. So one of the questions I was asked is for the round where is the last stitch? The last stitch is right before your yarn marker and since we're working six rounds you're just going to keep going. So you're not going to remove the yarn marker. The yarn marker is going to help you help show you when you finished your six rounds. I finished six rounds of one single crochet into every stitch and you can see how I have a nice snout forming. Now we're going to form the top of the snout. So you're going to take your crochet, I mean your yarn marker and move it up just to kind of keep help you keep track because this yarn is hard to see the stitches. You're going to take your crochet hook, you're going to go into the next stitch over and you're going to make a slip stitch. So you're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down and bring the yarn through both loops on your hook. Then you're going to turn your work and you're going to make one single crochet into the next eight stitches. So I have two more to make a total of eight. Then you're just going to turn your work. Then you're going to make one single crochet into the next seven stitches. You're headed back towards your yarn marker. have three more then you're going to make a slip stitch into the next stitch over then you're going to finish off just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew the snout onto the head. You can always get more yarn later so you don't have to bring out too much. Then just remember, and you can leave your yarn marker in place if you need to help remember that this is the top part. I'm going to go ahead and take mine out but when you sew, go to sew the snout on, you're going to want this top portion to be the top of the snout. And then this is the bottom. So the top part that we just made and then the bottom. Now we're going to go ahead and set this aside. I'm going to show you how to make the nose. For the nose, you're going to take your black yarn and you're going to fold it over on itself to form a loop. Then you're going to take your crochet hook. I'm using my J crochet hook. Just put it right through the loop. Hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and your thumb, then just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop for a slip knot. Then you're going to make a chain of six. It's one, Then, after you make a chain of six, you're going to go into the second chain from the hook. So you just take your crochet hook, go into the second chain from the hook, bring up a loop, two loops on the hook, yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through both for a single crochet. Then you're going to make one single crochet into every stitch back across, except for the last stitch, you're going to make three single crochet 
into the same stitch for the last stitch only. So now I have my last stitch. I'm going to make three single crochet into the same stitch for that last stitch. I'm going to work behind my loose yarn end. I'm going to bury the loose yarn end as I work. Then you're going to be turning your work because now you're going to be making one single crochet into every stitch on the opposite side. So we just worked the single crochet along the bottom. Now we're going to work on the opposite side. You're going to go into the next stitch over, go behind your loose yarn end, make your single crochet. You're going to make a single crochet into every stitch across except for the last stitch. Again, you're going to make three single crochet into the last stitch. So now I'm at my last stitch. I'm going to go ahead and cut my loose yarn end. And then I'm going to make my three single crochet into that last stitch. Now I'm going to get my yarn marker just place it right where I left off. Then you're going to make one single crochet into every stitch for three rounds. So one single crochet in every stitch for three rounds and then come back. Then after you finish your third round then you're going to take and make a slip stitch into the next stitch over. Just go into the next stitch Yarn over and bring the yarn through both loops on your hook. Then go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew the nose onto your dog. One last thing with the nose. Go ahead and get your tapestry needle and put it onto the long end that you left for sewing. And then you're going to take your tapestry needle, go towards the wrong side. So the right side is facing out towards me. Then you're going to take your tapestry needle and come right through the center where you have the larger holes in the center and bring the yarn through that hole and then just weave it through. Just covering the hole a little bit on the front and then just go back down in. And then you can see how it just covers those holes nicely. Now you can take and stuff the nose. And we're going to sew it onto the snout. So you're just going to go in and out, sewing the base of the nose to the snout. Make sure that you center the nose so that the top part, where we made a little bit longer top portion, is centered correctly with the nose. Then. For the bottom part of the nose, this is the center of my magic circle. You could see how I went one row up and sewed my nose in place. Then after you've sewn the nose on, then you can take your tapestry needle with the black colored yarn and you're going to go in from the wrong side and come out in the center of the bottom of the nose. Make sure you leave enough loose yarn end on the inside for tying a knot. Then you're going to take the yarn, you're going to go straight down, and this is the center of my magic circle. I'm going straight down below it. Then I'm going to make the smile, so I'm going to come up on the one side. I'm going to go a little bit lower. And then I'm going to go right back in the center.
Then I'm going to come up on the other side. Make sure you make the smile equal. And then once you have it the way you like it, just bring it through. And then you're going to go back in the center. Then you have your smile. You can tie your knot on the inside. And then when you come back, I'll show you how to make now the tongue. Now for the tongue, you're just going to take your pink yarn, and we're going to start with a magic circle. Just drape it across your four fingers. Use your thumb to stabilize. Then wrap the yarn around your two middle fingers and hold it in place with your pinky and your thumb. And then you're going to take your J crochet hook, bring up a loop, then yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through that loop for your slip knot. Then you're going to make 12 single crochet into the magic circle. So I have two more. Then, same way with your forefinger and thumb, you just hold the base of the 12 single crochet. Then you take those two loops on the opposite side and pull on one of them. If it doesn't close, again, you let go and pull on the other one, but this one's closing. Then you just take that loose yarn in and pull on that. And then you want to make sure you close that circle as much as you can, because now you're just going to turn your work and then you're going to make one single crochet into the next stitch. Then you're going to make one single crochet into the second stitch. And then two single crochet into the third stitch. And you're going to repeat that all the way to the other side. So one single crochet one single crochet, then two in the third stitch, then one single crochet, one, and then two, and now you've made the tongue shape so you don't need to finish any more. Then what you can do is you can just make a slip stitch into the next stitch over. Just yarn over and pull the yarn through both loops on your hook. Then you're going to go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew the tongue onto the dog. Now I'm going to show you how to sew the tongue onto now, the dog. Now if you don't like the nose as prominent like on this one, you could just do two rows, two rounds of one single crochet into every stitch, but I like my nose to be a large one. Then you're just going to take your tapestry needle, put it onto the long end that you left for sewing, then you're just going to take and place the tongue right underneath the smile. And then you're just going to sew across the top of the tongue only and sew it onto the snout so that you can still see the smile. So go ahead, sew the tongue on, and then come back. This is how mine looks after I've sewn on the tongue. To make the head, you're going to take your main colored yarn and you're going to fold it over on itself to form a loop. 
Take your J crochet hook, put it right through the loop, and hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and your thumb. Then you're going to yarn over and pull the yarn through the loop for a slip knot. Then you're going to make a chain of 14. I'm going to just show you a couple of them. You can see how I'm making a chain. Go ahead, finish a chain of 14, and then come back. You can see how I finished my chain of 14. Now you're going to chain, you're going to hold that last stitch with your middle finger and your thumb, and then you're going to chain one. Then you're going to take your crochet hook, go into the stitch that you're holding with your middle finger and thumb, or the second chain from the hook. You're going to bring up a loop, two loops on the hook, yarn over and go through both for a single crochet. Then you're going to make a single crochet into every stitch back across and then come back. So one single crochet in every stitch back across. Now this is how your work should look and this one you want to try and keep the edges as straight as possible. You know that you're going to have 14 stitches and we're going to make 10 rows total. So then when you reach the end you're just going to chain one, turn your work, and then you're going to go into the next stitch over so you see how right below it there is a stitch below your chain one, but you're not going to go in that same stitch. You're going to go into the next stitch over. That will be your second. And then you just make one single crochet into every stitch across, and you should still only have a total of 14. And then you're going to chain one and turn your work, and you're going to keep doing that until you've completed 10 rows and then come back. This is how mine looks after finishing 10 rows of one single crochet into every stitch. Then when you finish your last row, go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and just pull enough yarn through to bury into your work just a little bit. And you're going to need a total of five of these. Now you should have five pieces all made the same way and now we're going to sew them together to form the Just head. Just take some of the same colored yarn and put it onto your tapestry needle. Then you're going to take the two short ends and place them together right on top of each other and then take your, tr your tapestry needle and then you're just going to go right through the ends of the short end so you can see how we crocheted this way lengthwise but you're going to turn it on its side and sew it on the short end. And then just tie a knot. And then just go back and forth, sewing the two ends together. And you're only going to sew just this one side. After you finish sewing the two ends together, you can see how you have a nice seam on the right side, which is what you want. So now I have the wrong side still facing up. Then you're going to take your next piece and you're going to sew it to the other end. Make sure that when you sew that you have the right sides together. You don't want to have one seam sticking up like this and then one seam like this. So make sure that all of your nice seams are on the same side as you sew. After you've finished sewing all four pieces together, you can see how you have the nice seam on the right side. 
Go ahead and keep it on the wrong side and then you're going to fold the, wrong, the right sides together so that the wrong side is facing up and then you're going to take your tapestry needle and just sew the two pieces together to form the head and then I'm going to show you how to sew the top part on. Now you have a nice square made after sewing all the pieces together. Now we're going to put the top part on. Then you're going to place the top part on and you're going to sew each side making sure that each corner lines up with a corner. And I still have the wrong side facing me and I'm just going to sew each of the edges around to close the top of the head. This is what mine looks like after sewing the top on and you can see how I matched up each of the corners. Now I could turn it inside out and you have the top of the head. Now I have the wrong side on the inside and the right side is facing me. You're going to take your crochet hook and you're going to join it anywhere. You're going to take your yarn and then just loop it, bring up a loop, then bring it a little bit closer. Then you're going to chain one and then tie your knot. Then just take a, a yarn marker and place it right where you're about to begin your stitches. That will help you keep track of your rounds because now you're going to make one single crochet into every stitch around until you've completed three rounds. So three rounds of just one single crochet in every stitch around. Now I just finished my first round. You can see I'm coming right up on my yarn marker. I'm just going to keep on going. So now I'm going to start working on my second round. And I'm going to keep going until I've finished three rounds total. You can see where I finished three rounds of one single crochet into every stitch. Now you can go ahead and just leave a little bit of a loop here. We're going to go to the opposite side and we're going to work on putting the face on. So now you're on the opposite side. We'll come back to closing the head later. Now you're going to go towards the front and we're going to sew the snout. Then you can go on. ahead and stuff the snout and put your tapestry needle on the long end that you left for sewing. Then you're going to take your snout and you're going to center it in the center of the front of the face. Make sure that you line the bottom of the snout with the bottom of the head and then you just sew it in place. Make sure you leave at least the um, four rows at the top. Here is the top seam. So you just want to leave room for your eyes. Then I just go in and out at the base of the snout and I just sew the snout in place making sure that the nose stays straight as I sew. Now I'm going to show you how to make the ear. You're going to take your yarn, you're going to fold it over on itself to form a loop, put your crochet hook right through the loop, then hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and thumb, then you're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down and bring it through the loop for a slip knot. Now you're going to make a chain of three Then you're going to chain, you're going to hold that last stitch with your middle finger and thumb, then you're going to chain one. Then you're going to take your crochet hook and go into the stitch that you're holding with your middle finger and thumb or the second chain from the hook. Bring up a loop, two loops on the hook, yarn over and go through both for a single crochet. Then you're going to make one single crochet 
and to every stitch back across then you're going to chain one turn your work then you're going to make a stitch into the same stitch as your chain one so take your crochet hook go into that same stitch make a single crochet then you're going to make a single crochet into the next stitch single crochet into the next stitch and then two single crochet into that last stitch which will give you a total of six then you're going to chain one. This is how my work looks so far. So you chain one, turn your work, you're going to go into the same stitch and make a single crochet. Then go into the next stitch, be my third one. Next stitch, my fourth one. next stitch will be my fifth then make two single crochet into the next stitch six and seven then you're going to make a single a chain one turn your work go into the same stitch so that will be two Go into the next stitch for three, next stitch for four, next stitch for five, next stitch for six, and then the next stitch for two, two, two um, single crochet, and that would be eight. Then you're going to chain one turn your work, make a single crochet into the same stitch for two, next stitch for three, next stitch for four, next stitch for five, next stitch for six, seven, eight, and then two single crochet into the last stitch for ten. Then you're going to do the same thing, chain one, turn your work, go into the same stitch for two, next stitch for three, next stitch four five six seven eight nine ten and then the two in the last stitch for 12. Then you're just going to chain one, but this time you're not going to go into the same stitch, you're going to go into the next stitch over and you're going to make four rows of one single crochet into every stitch which should be 12 stitches
So after I get the last stitch, then just chain one, turn, go into the next stitch over, and you're just going to repeat this until you've completed. We've already done one row, row. So this is my second, so you're going to do a total of two more after this second row so that you have a total of four and then come back. This is how mine looks so far and I've just finished my fourth row of one single crochet into every stitch. Then you're just going to finish off, just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew the ear onto the dog. Then you're going to need two of these ears. For the body, you're going to start with the pearl color. You're going to start with a magic circle. Just take and drape the yarn across your four fingers. Use your thumb to stabilize. Then wrap the yarn around your two middle fingers and then hold in place with your pinky and your thumb. Then take your crochet hook and go through those two loops. Bring up a loop. Then you're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for a slip knot. Then you're going to make six single crochet into the magic circle. Then you're going to take your forefinger and thumb and just hold the base of the six single crochet and just close the magic circle like you've done before. Then you're going to turn your work and you're just going to make two single crochet into every stitch around until you have a total of 12. And then come back. Then, this is how your work should look so far. Go ahead and take your yarn marker and place it right where you left off. And we're going to make an increase round. For the first increase round, you're going to make one single crochet into two stitches. Then you're going to make two single crochet into the third stitch and then repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker and then come back. Then you're going to take and move your yarn marker up right where you left off and we're going to make another increase round the exact same way. One single crochet into two stitches and then two single crochet into the third stitch. And then you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around to the yarn marker. And then you're going to move the yarn marker up for the next increase round, which is going to be the exact same thing. One single crochet into two stitches, and then two single crochet into third stitch. And this is our second time repeating this increase round. We're going to do it a total of two more times after this round for a total of four increase rounds the exact same way. This is how my work looks after finishing the increase rounds. Then you're going to take and make a slip stitch into the next stitch over. Actually, you don't have to do the slip stitch. We can um, join colors now. So what I'm going to do is just take my crochet hook, go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, then I have two loops on the hook. I'm just going to go ahead and join the new color without Then you take finishing your second off. color and you're going to take and loop it and bring it through both loops on your hook. Then you're going to take and cut your previous color. Then just turn it over and tie a knot. Then 
you're just going to make a single crochet. You can take your yarn marker out. You don't really need it at this point because you can tell by the color change where you are in the pattern. So the first thing you're going to do is go into that first stitch and you're going to make a single crochet and we're going to make one more increase round with our new color. So one single crochet into two stitches and then two single crochet into the third stitch just like we did for the four previous rounds. And then you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the beginning and then come back. Then once you reach the beginning go ahead and make a slip stitch into that first stitch that you made. Then you can chain one. Take your yarn marker, place it right where you left off to help you keep track of the rounds. Then you're just going to make one single crochet into every stitch around until you've completed 15 rounds. So one single crochet in every stitch until you've completed 15 rounds and then come back. This is how my work looks after finishing 15 rounds of one single crochet into every stitch. Then you're going to take your yarn marker and then move it up to where you left off because we're going to start our decrease round and you can go ahead and stuff the body at any time when you're working the decrease round. For your first decrease round you're going to make one single crochet into three stitches and then you're going to make your decrease stitch. You're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn. Marker. I went ahead and put the stuffing in mine and I'm going to keep continuing to put stuffing in as I need it and as I close. Now you're going to take and move your yarn marker up and for this decrease round you're going to make one single crochet into two stitches and then you're going to make your decrease stitch and then repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. If you have any stitches left before the yarn marker you can just put single crochets into those stitches then when you reach the yarn marker go ahead and move it up to where you left off and then again you're just going to re keep repeating the one single crochet into two stitches and then making your decrease stitch then repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker then you just take your yarn marker and now you're just going to make decrease stitches I stuffed mine a little bit more now you're just going to make decrease stitches all the way around and now the back. body should be almost closed so now what you're going to do is you're just going to slip stitch it closed so you're going to skip the next stitch go into the next stitch then yarn over turn the hook upside down and bring the yarn through both loops on your hook for a slip stitch. And you're just going to do that all the way around until the body is closed. So skip a stitch, go into the next stitch over, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. I'm going to make one more. Then I'm going to go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. Then you just take your tapestry needle, put it onto the loose yarn end. And you're going to go it right in where you finished off and come out anywhere on the body. Then just cut your loose yarn end. And now we're going to go ahead and stuff the head and sew the head onto the body. Now you're just going to go ahead and take 
the stuffing and put it inside of the head. And then you're going to place the tapestry needle on the long end that you left for sewing or the same color as the head. And you're going to line it up with the front of the body, the color on the body, and then just sew the head in place. I'm going to make sure that the head is straight and facing forward. And then you're just going to take your tapestry needle and you're just going to sew into the body and then up into the base of the head. And you're just going to sew it all the way around. Just going in and out all along the base, lining up straight in the front and then lining and sewing along the base on the front all the way around the head. And you may need to do it several times to make sure it's very secure. And then So this back. is how mine is looking. Making sure that it's sewn on very securely. I'm just going in and out of the body and the head and just making sure that the head is securely sewn on and is straight and is not too wobbly. So you just keep going in and out. And sometimes I'll go around two or three times just to make sure that the head is very if secure. If the end of your yarn gets a little shredded, then sometimes what helps is taking a little yarn threader, just hooking it right through the eye of your tapestry needle. And then you just take and hook that yarn and bring it through. And then this is my loose yarn end I'm finished with, so I can take and just go in right where I tied the knot and then come out anywhere. And then you can take and just cut the loose yarn end. Now you should have both ears completed and we're going to sew them onto the dog. And you can see the placement that I did for my ears, how far away from the eyes and then the line, the top of the ear lined up with the eye. And wherever you sew your ear, you just have to make sure that you sew it evenly on the other side. And usually I'll line up the top first. So on this side, you can see how I went through with my tapestry needle, where I want to place the ear. And then you just sew it in place. So I sewed on the top part first to line it up with the eye and then you want it the same distance from the eye on the bottom end. And when I sew it, I have a little bit of a curve on the ear, just slight curve. And that just helps to fold the ear down forward. After you get the ears sewn on, and this is what mine looks like, after I've gotten them both sewn on. And this is how they look with the little slight curve to them and the distance I have from the eyes and lined up. Just so you can see how I have mine lined up and they're equal on both sides and they flop down. Now we're going to start the decorating part with the fur. Now for the decorating part of it, you're going to need your yarn on your tapestry needle. And then I'm going to start with one ear. And you can design it however you want, but what you do is you just take your tapestry needle and you just go in and out. And you're going to form a loop. Oh, there we go. So you're just going to bring the yarn through. And you can leave it as long of a length as you want because we're going to trim it later. So you don't want it too short because you have to tie a knot. So you want to leave a little bit of a length to work with and you can always trim it later. Then you're just going to take and go in and out forming loops wherever you would like your hair to fall on the ear. So I'm just going to do a few along this direction and whatever loops that you make you want to make the loops the same length because we're going to cut them and tie a knot. 
So I'm just going to put a few loops on the ear. And I want to put some another direction too. So I'm just going to do it, put a few loops this direction. And you can do it however way that you want once you see how I do it. Then once you put the few loops that you want where you want it, then you're going to take and you're going to cut the end of the loop with your scissors. Then you're going to take and tie a knot with your loose ends. Just tie a knot loosely so you don't pull the loops. You don't want to pull the loops loose and then you can just kind of do a firm knot after you've tied the first, first one. Then you just take and cut every loop and make sure that every strand that you tie a knot Then, when I put the dog upright, I can see how the loops fall, and then I can determine how I would like to cut the strands. So I'm going to keep this one of a triangular shape, so I'm just going to take the end loops, and then I'm going to take my scissors, and then I'm just going to cut it at an angle, in a triangular angle along the ear. And then that's how I'm going to leave it for this ear. And you're going to do the same thing on the other ear, the same decoration with the loops. So here you can see how I just put a few loops on her ears. Now I'm going to show you how to make the eyebrows. So for the eyebrows, I'm just starting right in the corner. And you can see how I'm leaving a loop right above the eye, kind of a long loop. We're going to trim it later. And I'm just going right across the brow. And I'm going to make one, I'm going to go all the way across and just sew loops right across, right above the eyes. Thank you.